Marcus Aurelius is one of the most famous and well-known Stoic philosophers of all time. He was Roman emperor from 161 to 180 AD and was the last ruler of a line that later became known as the Five Good Emperors. He was in one of the highest positions of power in the world at the time and would have had access to the fulfillment of all his temptations and desires if he desired them, but instead he dedicated his life to fairness and justice. During his reign, Aurelius found time to produce a series of autobiographical writings, now known as the Meditations, which have become one of the most important texts within Stoic philosophy. In the Meditations, Aurelius describes instructions on how to improve. These focused primarily on taking a cosmic perspective and critically analyzing your judgment of yourself and others as the leader of a powerful empire that experienced several wars during its reign. Aurelius used his own Stoic philosophy to let go of stress and worry and be the best and most reliable leader he could be. Stoicism is an ancient and incredibly famous philosophy that is not only a theory, but also a truly inspiring way of thinking and living. The Stoics firmly believed that doing the right thing was the key to individual happiness, and that doing the right thing required good judgment and clear, rational thinking. With that in mind, in this video we talk to you about how to develop a rational mind through five key lessons that can help you think more clearly. From the teachings of Marcus Aurelius. Lesson number one. Marcus Aurelius says to train your mind. Choose not to get hurt, and you won't feel hurt. Don't feel hurt. And you haven't taken control of how you see things. Is one of the most important lessons of Stoicism. We constantly judge everything we see. We place a value judgment on everything we do, everyone we meet, and everything we see. It was bad, good, boring, funny, pretty ugly, or something else. Our ignorance has prevented us from realizing that this is a very stressful habit that could make our lives worse. For example, if sees every interaction you have on a really bad day as terrible, you will feel even worse about the day itself. It just gets boring if you mention a party you attended. People often let their feelings influence their first thoughts about things. In this boring part of the week, that means these thoughts are probably not entirely logical. Our tendency to speak in metaphors and exaggerations that make things worse goes hand in hand with our tendency to judge every moment of our lives. Someone might say that they broke your heart instead of telling you that they no longer feel the same way about you. If you allow the way you speak, or rather the way you think, to influence your feelings, it is not the event itself that makes you feel bad, but the way you think about it, without noticing it. Socrates, on the other hand, urges people to think carefully about how they should judge everyone and everything they do. And one way to be careful is to undo the decisions you've made. That means being able to ignore them, Forget your first thought and look at something with a more positive and sensible vision. You might want to think of this double party as an opportunity to experience a new place and meet new people, okay? After that, you might think that you haven't really connected with anyone. But you didn't expect that. To train your perspective on life, the best thing you can do is practice and not judge everything based on your initial thoughts and feelings. When you have strong feelings about something, Ask yourself, is this logical? What happens if I base my thinking on, is there a better or more positive way to understand this? For Marcus Aurelius, it was important that you can only cause harm if you believe it is harm. At this point, everything that was difficult for you seems to be getting worse. You decide how much certain things affect you. The harder and worse you think something is, the more it affects you. The Stoics also say that you should see every bad thing that happens as an opportunity or source of good, like an exercise. Your point of view is very serious. Getting around an obstacle is a challenge. You might get angry if a new colleague takes too long to learn and their mistakes cost the company money. This colleague is getting in the way of what you want to do, 
which is to be effective and efficient and make money. But this situation can also be an opportunity to do good. It gives young people the opportunity to work with their patients and become better teachers so that they can learn how to help new people fit into the organization and how to deal with stressful times. All of these skills will be useful to you in the future and will help you make more money over time. Marcus Aurelius famously said, What prevents you from acting drives you to act. What stands in the way becomes the way when you look at things. Don't judge them based on what you think they should be. Better see them as they really are. You may also discover that life is simpler and clearer than you thought. There is a more positive and a more negative way to look at every situation. You will find that nothing bothers you as much as before, and life will be much calmer after making these changes. Lesson number two. Learn to control your emotions. Marcus Aurelius urges us not to allow our feelings to take control of what our minds tell us. Stop lying, constantly being selfish and angry. People often show that emotional action is very different from logical action. There is a good reason for this. Emotions are the only thing that can cause us to lose our sense of good and evil. If you want to always be able to think clearly, one of the most important skills you need to learn is managing your feelings. Marcus Aurelius said in that anger is one of the emotions that does more harm than good. Controlling your emotions does not mean belittling them. As many people seem to think, when someone cheats on you, you get very angry. You cannot control this anger by telling yourself or others that it doesn't exist. Pretend everything is fine. No matter how deep you go, it will still be there. The Stoics say that the best way to control emotions such as anger is to change the way these emotions are felt. So next time you get angry, think about what you can do with that anger. If someone hurts you, you may want to yell at them. But will it make you feel better or less hurt? Will the person who hurt you get better? Finally, think about what you want to do and ask yourself if it will help you. If not, find healthy ways to talk about your feelings. You may get better results if you talk to the person who hurt you. Gently tell them how you feel and try to see things from their perspective. You could also write in a notebook and then exercise. Lose yourself in a computer game or anything else that can help you calm down. Take worry or fear as another example. You can't just push it down. However, you can change your attitude towards this. Instead of letting worries stop you, you can use it to push yourself to do things that make you feel and be aware of its presence at all times. Let's say you're afraid to ask your boss for a raise. Such fears cause many people not to do something and to let their worries stop them. Some people may do it because they see your concern as something that gets in their way and should be ignored. But none of this has to be true. On the other hand, you can talk about your fear in a healthy way, and it might even help you because you are afraid. You might think of all the bad things that could happen, like what questions your boss might ask you and what reasons he might give against it. Then you can prepare and make a plan for every possible outcome. Most importantly, though, the fear makes you want to do it in a good way to push yourself and get better as a person, to show yourself that you can do it not in spite of your fear, but because of it. You can be aware of your nervousness the whole time and think, wow, I'm so cool. I'm trying this anyway. If you can easily control your strong emotions, you'll always be calm, and your feelings will never get in the way of your ability to think clearly and make good choices to clear your thoughts. You need to be able to handle your feelings. Lesson number three. Use the dichotomy of control in your life. According to Marcus Aurelius, you have control over your own mind, not over the events that happen in the outside world. When you have this understanding, you can find strength. The difference between what we can control and what we cannot control is called the control dichotomy. The weather, traffic problems, and what other people think are all examples of things that are beyond your control. On the other hand, you have the opportunity to how you dress when you go out and what kind of people you surround yourself with. That's why, whenever you're faced with a circumstance that makes you feel a certain way, you should ask yourself, what can I control? Anything you can control is a reason to act. 
it is important to learn, accept, and embrace everything that you cannot control without allowing it to affect you. Gaining the ability to distinguish between these two things, I, and acting on that distinction, can immediately clear your mind. The dichotomy of control consists of a very significant component. It is a Greek fadi expression that means love of fate. You will always love life if you accept it in its entirety, including all the changes and challenges it brings. It is impossible for anyone to escape fate or to make decisions about circumstances beyond their control. Despite everything, you have the opportunity to choose to love your life. One might think that there is no way out of such a situation when you find out that you were rejected for a job that you have been looking for for years. You are interested in the job. I tried, but was unsuccessful, given the circumstances. It is impossible for you to pretend to feel affection for fate. However, this is a big misunderstanding. Instead of viewing the fact that you were unable to achieve your goal as a purely negative event, you should examine the factors that led to the unfavorable outcome and then use that information to make a positive decision. It is possible that the reason for not being hired was your own shortcomings. If this is the case, then you have the ability to take control of the situation if a similar opportunity arises in the future. You can work to correct these errors and then try again. Alternatively, the reason could have been an external factor, such as favoritism or a personality conflict with an employee responsible for the hiring. You were never in control of it, which means the opportunity was never really available to you. To make matters worse, there's no point in being angry about something that never existed. The act of distancing oneself from a given result and external indicators of success is another component of accepting one's own fate. For example, if you want to become a writer and want to measure your success by the number of sales of your book, then you allow your success to be controlled by the arbitrary, occurring book market at this moment. On the other hand, if you choose to calculate your level of success based on your level of satisfaction with the final product or the effort you have invested, then you are responsible for your own success. Therefore, you must strive to do everything in your power to try to achieve the goals you have set for yourself. However, you should never forget that you may not be able to achieve these goals, and you should be prepared for this possibility in advance. One can be in a state of calm if one focuses one's attention exclusively on the things that are within one's control and commits to accepting anything that does not come exactly as it is, what, whatever that may be, happen. Lesson number four, always keep the virtues in mind. Marcus Aurelius is credited with saying, dig deep within yourself, for there is a source of good always ready to flow if you keep digging. Simply put, a virtue is an example of morally praiseworthy behavior. A virtue is an excellence of character. Morally good behavior not only benefits you and those around you, but also the cause of the common good. The Stoics believed that everything and everyone in the universe was connected in some way. They believed that the universe was interdependent, according to Stoicism. Therefore, what is best for the common good is ultimately also best for you. After the introduction for this reason, the Stoics were convinced that the most rational people were those who felt committed to the common good. Or, to put it another way, he acted virtuously. The Stoics believed that ignorance was the primary cause of an individual's lack of virtuous behavior when life took one down a path one did not expect. The virtues of can point you to the right actions to take and help you stand firm. The reason for this is that the most virtuous people are those who are the most relaxed and calm enough to be virtuous. It is necessary to keep in mind the main virtues of Stoicism, which in the eyes of the Stoics are wisdom, Justice, temperance, and courage. Wisdom is the ability to judge what is good or bad, what is in the middle or what is neutral, and not be influenced by one's own feelings. It is necessary to think clearly and rationally in order to determine what ethically appropriate actions should be taken. You are in a difficult situation when you have two options to choose from. 
The ability to think about both is the essence of wisdom. Then there is justice. Justice is something that can be achieved through wisdom and involves acting not only fairly but also justly towards ourselves and others. The Stoics believed that it was a duty owed not only to oneself, but also to one's neighbor and to society as a whole. The third virtue, courage, is the ability to act, even if you are afraid of something. Do whatever is necessary or useful, even if you are not sure whether you will succeed or not. Fear, desire, or fear to quit is not the same as having courage. The most important thing about is that we make the choice to act and to act, despite our fears, passions, and anxieties. Finally, moderation. Moderation is another word that can be used as moderation. Therefore, it is important to maintain a balance between two extremes and ensure that you never take too much or too little for yourself. When it comes to implementation, moderation often takes the form of self-control, self-control or discipline. According to Aurelius, one of the characteristics that distinguished humans from animals was the ability to stop their own actions when necessary. It is more important to practice moderation to ensure our long-term well-being than to satisfy our short-term desires. Consider a bag of chips as an example of something seemingly insignificant. Going through the whole bag at once may be nice in the moment, but it is harmful to your health and could even affect your mood in certain circumstances. Therefore, it is important to exercise self-control and not eat anything after the first few bites. Wisdom also plays a role in bringing about temperance. Making a decision about how much of something you need to acquire before you stop doing it can only be achieved through careful consideration to categorize everything that might happen in the world. The Stoics divided it into three categories, good, bad, and indifferent. It has always been important to seek the good, distance yourself from evil, and choose indifference if you want. If you act contrary to any of these virtues, you create evil. Take, for example, stealing from another person, being disrespectful to them, behaving recklessly or cowardly, or harming the health of another person. When you do good, you are involved in the event that you behave according to these virtues and do not behave like that. If you perform casual actions, like going for a walk, following simple guidelines, you will not only become a more well-rounded person, but also a more relaxed person. Lesson number five, always keep the big picture in mind. The last quote we have for in this video is from Marcus Aurelius, who says how beautifully Plato put everything together. Whenever you want to talk about people, it's best to take a bird's eye view and see everything at once. The author writes, when we live our lives, we are always in the middle of it. And it is extremely important to remember that it is extremely important to step back and look at the big picture. For example, any problem can feel like the end of the world in the middle of a relatively small crowd. It seems like the whole city is full of people. However, if you take a few steps away from the crowd, you will find that the opposite is true. So if we take a step back and examine the entire world in our lives, we can see how insignificant everything we experience really is and how insignificant we really are. This opens our eyes to the vastness of the world that exists beyond the scope of our own personal experience. Even among themselves, many people fail to recognize that their own experiences and opinions are not the only things that should be considered important. For example, a person who has had a negative experience with dogs may not understand or believe that dogs can be of great benefit to other people and wonderful pets unless they make a conscious effort to consider the possibility that they, I have had different experiences. It is necessary for each of us to periodically step back and ask ourselves what we are missing or not considering. This can be beneficial in several ways. For example, imagine that you are faced with the decision of whether to continue working in your current position or to apply for a position that has recently become available elsewhere. This decision may seem difficult, especially if you are unsure which of these two options meets your needs. You may be satisfied with your current position, 
and do not want to take on the additional responsibilities that a promotion brings. However, with you value the higher remuneration that comes with it, you may feel trapped. However, there are many other things you could consider. Have you ever thought about the possibility of switching to a completely different industry? Maybe a side business? Is it possible to earn money in addition to your current job? Use the time you have available. It's possible that devoting yourself entirely to a hobby can distract your attention from the time you spend doing something that you don't particularly enjoy. There is a significant chance that you are not even aware of the numerous options that life offers you when it comes to making a decision. It can be extremely beneficial to step back and look at the bigger picture rather than just focusing on what is immediately in front of you. Not only is it helpful to step back and look at the bigger picture when forming an opinion, but it is also helpful in deciding what is most important. You must be aware of all the possibilities or facets associated with a particular circumstance to make an accurate assessment. Another advantage of taking a step back is that it allows you to distance yourself from your own opinions and prejudices. There's a chance that if you temporarily let go of your own desires, you'll remember the people around you and the responsibilities you have to them. In the heat of the moment, you may not realize that trash is a big problem. However, when you step back and consider the entire world, as well as the possibility that everyone else is doing it too, you eventually realize how insignificant your desire to throw away trash is. As mentioned above, the Stoics held the belief that everything in the world is connected and that the general well-being of the world also increases your personal well-being. This was in comparison to the well-being of the world. Therefore, it is of utmost importance to take a step back and look at the world as a whole instead of just focusing on your own life. If you are faced with a decision, a challenge, a problem, or a change in your life, you can ask yourself some questions from now or at a later time. This may happen perhaps when you think about your day, either during a walk or when you write in a diary about what Aurelius particularly liked. One of the most common questions you should ask yourself is, what long-term consequences may my decision or action have? How is it possible that another person's point of view differs from mine? If I know someone who is in a similar situation or has similar goals to me, could you help me? Does my decision or action have an impact on my general health? Does it affect the health of those around me? What options are available? But I haven't thought about that yet. By taking the time to think about everything that happens in the world, you will be able to gain a better understanding of your actions, thoughts, your life, and the decisions you make. In addition, it is beneficial for you because it allows you to help the whole world. If you take into account everything that is happening, you will always have a holistic perspective, which prevents you from limiting yourself through unjustified limitations, prejudices, or insecurities. If you enjoyed this video, we recommend you visit our channel to see more videos that will help you. You can achieve success and happiness by applying ancient philosophical principles. Remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching the video.